So in the next uh, 15 minutes, uh, I'm going to tell you why Siemens created a new sector called infrastructure in cities. It's a 17 billion euro sector, 90,000 people working globally on it, and why we believe that this uh, sector can create a lot of value for cities um, and vice versa. Just I have to find out how that goes. How did you do that? There's only one. Okay, here we go. So, um, before we created this new sector, and I can tell you this is a lot of effort, uh, pulling 90,000 people together in a, an organization, we went out and studied what is the market, what is the market uh, which Siemens can address, um, market for cities and related infrastructure. And we, come, we came back, we studied that, we sent out people from uh, 15 of our business units, um, talking to cities, to mayors, uh, to decision bodies. They came back as a 240 billion euro market just for the new sector only, sums up to uh, another uh, 25 billion for healthcare and other areas which is not in the new sector. And it's a market which is growing faster than the average global GDP. Um, of course, you all know that, that today the top 600 cities in the world, which are cities with 750,000 inhabitants and more, they're creating already 50% of the global GDP. Um, and uh, that cities are still the, the largest consumers of energy. 40% of energy um, is consumed in buildings, for example. Um, they were also found out that this is a this is a mega trend. Urbanization is really a trend which carries on, and it's a trend which we should not fight. And there's a, a reason behind it, because um, if you look at the gro growth and the GDP growth globally, um, I, I believe there are basically three drivers. Number one is population, and in some areas uh, population is flattening out. Number two is efficiency, technology, driving productivity, basically. And number three is urbanization, because urbanization in an urban environment is the most effective and most efficient way to provide infrastructure for people. Is it energy? Is it transport? Is it uh, hospitals, schools, culture? So therefore, um, it's one of the major drivers of, of the growth of economy. Um, and this was also recognized by Li Keqiang, of the new one of the new leaders, uh, that this will also drive the economy of China for the next decades. So therefore, a very interesting market for Siemens. and. Um, Furthermore, we studied, and uh, I can tell you, meanwhile, I'm talking every week or every other week to mayors, and we end up all the way in the same discussion, and the needs are, are really common. It's a kind of a pattern. We first talk about transport, how to move people and goods within an, 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 a city environment. It's a huge challenge for each and every city. Secondly, it's about energy. Um, it's about energy and energy efficiency. Some, for example, when we talked to the mayor of Lagos, his only concern was, how do I get enough energy into my city? Um, and if you talk to um, New York, the question is, how can I get with a limited space even more energy into the city? Because the city is consuming more and more. Third one, um, if you go further, is about um, the uh, environment. environment. That means a reduction of CO2 emissions, clean air, and last one is security. Believe it or not, security is one of the major concerns. And this goes back um, to one common theme, which is also unifying all cities. They are competing against each other on a global basis. Um, when, we, when I'm talking to, uh, when I recently talked to Mayor of Seoul, he was asking how is Seoul performing compared to Singapore, Shanghai, or, or, um, or Beijing, for example. So that means they're looking to each other, they're benchmarking because they're competing for jobs, they're competing for attracting talents. This is how cities are moving forward. And actually, um, this is a who is who of the portfolio which we are combining in this new sector. It's about intelli tra intelligent traffic management, tolling, uh, traffic flow management. It's about smart grids. Uh, the grids is, uh, are really taking a very important role in the whole element. Grids are starting to talk to buildings, buildings, energy efficiency in buildings but it's also everything which is related to transport, public transport in cities. So basically, the mission of this new sector is really being the pioneering partner for infrastructure and cities. Clean technology, efficient use of resources, connecting informations, 
and this is also about this uh, new area of IT, of big data. There will be a lot of, lot of data coming together in cities which have to be used in a much more intelligent way than we use it before. And of course, infrastructure and automating of infrastructure. So, um, having talked about the challenges, and again, this is a common, this is a common pattern which we see uh, in all cities. Um, one, one point to mention again is uh, waste and water. Uh, I skipped that. Uh, waste and water is another big concern of every city. Uh, water treatment, um, in some cities the leakage of water is uh, 50 to 60 percent. Um, the best, by the way, benchmarks are something like five or four. Uh, and waste, waste treatment is one of the major concerns. So we pull together a portfolio and we run it in five divisions, rail systems, it's all about rolling stock, mobility and logistics, it's the automation of how we may move people and goods in a city, low and medium voltage and smart grids is the whole grid, the connecting the grids and building technology. It's not only about energy efficiency in buildings, but it's also about security um, and safety, not only in buildings, but for cities. Maybe one interesting point is that some cities, they're really going for a kind of a secure city concept goes back to 9-11, goes back to terrorist attacks in India, where they are, the people found out that deploying the emergency forces is really a key issue. That nobody knew really who is going where and why and, and, and when. And bringing the data together, the data of the emergency forces, data of the cameras you have, to bring it in a one, one data fusion center together um, and creating um, one set of information in case of emergency, you deploy the people in the most effective way. Well, having said that, if you go for a new customer, you also have to find new ways how to address the customer. So we are building up a city account management and competence center for cities. This is a very important element because when we start sending our sales guys talking to cities, I mean, they go there and just try to sell to the mayor a new train or the latest propulsion system of Siemens, which is highly efficient. Well, but that's not really how you would address uh, the mayor of London. Um, when we talk about, he has concerns that how can I, my traffic flow is too low, or um, people are complaining that I don't have enough uh, uh, public transport. So we start from a completely different level. So we have to find people who are really, uh, let's say on a next higher integration level of, uh, of talking to, uh, to city or, or decision makers or infrastructure customers. This is centered in the center of competence this is a different, uh, we are calling also people from the outside world, bring this kind of competence. And account management. So we do have, currently it's uh, 60, 70 people who are dedicated for one city, doing nothing but talking to the city, finding out who is, who is deciding, um, how is the decision process going, what are the projects. And believe me or not, there are easier customers out there to deal with in terms of how to get a decision for um, uh, um, an infrastructure spending. So. Um, again, 17 billion euro turnover, 90,000 people globally. We have 60 account managers. This uh, is increasing center of competence. Um, and one of and the, the center of competence, um, which is located in London, by the way, um, it's close to the Darklands, close to the, to the city airport. And I can invite all of you to go there, have a look. It's called the Crystal. Um, it's not only an office building where we do have our center of competence, experts on city planning, on urban planning, experts on our technology, but on the other side, there's the largest um, exhibition on urban development, um, and it's a very interesting place. You can see what are the challenges and what are the technology solutions um, which um, we can provide for cities. So, um, benchmarking, I talked about benchmarking, which is a very important element for cities, not only to see how they do, how they perform compared to others, but also what they can, what they can learn from each other. And we, we created this, together with the Economist Intelligence Unit, this Green City Index. If you, by the way, have an iPad, you can download and you can search for Green City Index. It's a very interesting one, you can see the results. We benchmarked more than 120 cities globally in terms of energy efficiency, land use, emissions, and you name it. And I give you some findings there. Um, for example, Berlin. Berlin is one of the best in terms of energy efficiency in buildings. They did it with a, with a massive investment in, in modernizing building, converting coal furnace uh, into central heating, including the city, citizens' awareness, very important element for all cities, but also uh, working on climate protection um, partner um, of, of the year price. So, 
we um, were invited to go into um, more than 100 buildings. Our engineers looked at it, um, and we offered an energy performance contracting. That means we are bringing the money, uh, we are investing in these buildings, we are sharing the used energy bill, um, and finally, it's a win-win-win. It's a win for the city. They reduced um, the energy bill. It's a win for Siemens. It's a good business. It's a win for the environment because we were able um, to cut the CO2 emissions by 36,000 tons, uh, savings of 6 million per annum for the city so they can spend that money in a different way. And the investment is 27 million. The payback time is very interesting. Give you another example right away here in London. It's about transportation. We are working with London now since 2005 on really how to upgrade public transport, um, increase capacity, reduce travel time. Um, redu um, we introduced also this congestion charging, one of the first in the world, because it's not, you're not very public. If you're mayor and you introduce congestion charging, that's not really what makes you more popular, yet it solves your problem in terms of transport. And of course, also this cycle, uh, co um, increasing the, the uh, or pushing people more uh, to use the bike. We, what we did, we made uh, congestion charging, as I said, the uh, buses here in London run on our GPS-based system. We equipped these buses on top with hybrid uh, propulsion systems, e-car charging system, regional trains connecting to the Heathrow. All that together, and again, it's a, it's a multi-year program, all that together, um, we were able to increase the traffic flow by 37%. We have 20% less traffic going into London and on top 150,000 tons of CO2 emissions. What do these stories tell you? Um, before, uh, one more point. Look into the future. I was also asked to talk a little bit about what technology, um, what a kind of impact would technology make into the cities in the future. This is a picture of the future. We do that for certain areas. We did that also one for cities. And I give you just a quick walkthrough. Number one, the grids talk to buildings. Buildings are more and more prosumers. They consume and they produce, and it's more and more decentral energy. Uh, the amount of decentral energy power globally grows by 5.2% compared to the uh, to central power of 3.5. You have more and more, and again, the building has to start to talk to the grid. Secondly, urban and interurban mobility. There are 800 to 1,000 kilometers of metro lines created every year in China. Uh, similar 500, 600 th uh, kilometers in India. Uh, next one, power coming from renewables, renewable resources. Um, Seoul uh, wants to cut one power plant, nuclear power plant, in using less energy, going for more energy efficiency. Intelligent buildings with zero emissions, um, which are, again, buildings who are prosuming. They also have to have storage capacity. Decentral energies, um, generation and storage, requires that the grid is a completely different grid than the grid we are talking to right now. Intermodal transport solutions. That means, um, and coming back to one of my prior, prior speakers, the city have to, has to stop talking in silos that somebody is responsible for transport, another one for energy, another one for whatever. It has to be a really a more integrated way of looking into the city. Otherwise, we would not make, make the city move into the next generation. Intermodal transport solutions is one of the biggest points. The cities who understand their transport problems, they understand that they have to connect the view of managing the transport on, on road and um, on public. And we have interesting solutions there as well. And the whole thing will be connected by IT. There are so many informations generated by so many sensors um, all over the place. Cities are going to monitor what's happening in the city, how do the measures they put in place to, to reduce um, energy efficiency, uh, energy consumption, increase efficiency, how it works, that will go to, together um, into, thank you, into one data set. So, well, a company, a set of organization, we set up the new organization, we adapt to the city, and we are bringing technology to our partner. And on the other side, you have the city, um, and they have also some learnings, which I skip because I come to my last slide, if on just one more minute. On the right slide is, what is it, what we learn from cities, cities who are behaving good compared to those who are, let's say, following behind? And these are the five basic learnings. Number one, holistic approach, as I said. Um, it's need a, it needs a strong mayor, a person who is really have a vision and knows where to want to drive it. It's important. Uh, it has to have a long-term planning. Eliminate silo thinking. Um, I talked about it. Civic engagement. 
um, the, good, the good cities, they're coming from the very beginning and know they cannot move it really without getting um, the people engaged and benchmarking, learning from each other. Cities are going out, they benchmark, if they try to find solutions wherever they are on the globe, this is a, one of the second most asked questions, do you have a solution for my city where Siemens deployed its technology somewhere and they go there, they look at it, if they like it, they take it. Secondly, wealth is important, it's always good to have a good budget, but in the early stage, the right policies make a huge difference. Right technology and right technology partnership. It's a long-term partnership. It's not a quick sell, we know that. It's really making a partnership with the city, develop it, the relationship over the time. Financing, of course, is an issue. Um, it's about cost-efficient solutions, but also we do have solutions which we can save money or increase even the return, just talking about pricing for roads. And last but not least, very important message, sustainable cities, they do, they create jobs and they increase competitiveness, meaning that they are at the end growing faster than the others. So thank you very much for your attention.